بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful I testify that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is Allah's true slave and messenger may Allah sallallahu alayhi wa be upon the noble prophet the believers of his companions the believers of his family and the companions and those who follow on their path until the day of resurrection we continue the classes on the matter of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and particularly on the belief in the names and attributes And we know that the belief in the names and attributes comprises four matters. We affirm the names and attributes which Allah affirmed to Himself in His book and in the Sunnah of His Messenger وسلم, in the way that best fits Him without tahrif, without distortion of the meaning without ta'qil, without negating the meaning and without takif, without assigning a manner to any attribute and without tamthil, drawing parallels to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or likening him to his creation two sects went astray regarding this matter two sects went astray regarding this matter the first sect are known as Al-Mu'attila the first sect are known as Al-Mu'attila they are those who negated all or some of Allah's names and attributes claiming that affirming Allah's names and attributes necessitates tashbih necessitates tashbih meaning necessitates drawing similarities between Allah and His creation this claim is surely false in many respects including first it necessitates false obligations it necessitates false obligations like contradiction in the words of Allah far is he Allah removed from every imperfection why is this because this is so because Allah affirmed the names and attributes to himself and negated the likeness of anything unto him had its affirmation necessitate the tashbih, drawing comparison or likeness then it would imply contradiction in the speech of Allah and that its parts refute one another and this is impossible second it is not necessary that quote agreement in name end of quote or in an attribute between two things obligates likeness between them it is not necessary that agreement in name or in an attribute between two things obligates likeness between them indeed you see two people in a state of agreement where each is a hearing seeing and speaking human in no way this necessitates likeness in the human values nor in the hearing sight and speech also you see that animals have hands legs and eyes this kind of agreement does not necessitate that their hands 
legs and eyes are like each other now if this distinction in the agreement in names and, and qualities amongst the created things is clear then the distinction between the creator and the created is greater and more evident if this distinction in the agreement in names and qualities amongst the created things is clear and existing then the distinction between the creator and the created is greater and more evident this is the case refuting the first sect known as the Mu'attila the deniers the negators the second sect are known as al mushabbiha are known as al mushabbiha meaning those who affirm Allah's names and attributes but make tashbih draw similarities make tashbih they draw similarities they draw similarities and similarities between Allah and his creation claiming that this is what is necessitated by the meaning of the texts on the ground that Allah addresses mankind according to their understanding such a claim is false in many respects including first liken, likening Allah to his creation is a false concept that is negated by the textual proofs of the revelation as well as by reasoning thus it is impossible that a false matter is necessitated by the texts of the Quran and Sunnah and this is obvious it is impossible that a false matter is necessitated by the texts of revelation the Quran and the authentic Sunnah second Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed mankind according to their understanding of the basic meanings of his names and attributes and we underline this Allah addressed mankind according to their understanding of the basic meanings of his names and attributes however the knowledge of the essence the knowledge of the essence and true nature of meanings regarding his self and his attributes exclusively belongs to Allah alone I will repeat Allah addressed mankind according to their understanding of the basic meanings of his names and attributes however the knowledge of the essence and true nature of meanings regarding his self and his attributes exclusively belongs to Allah alone exclusively belongs to Allah alone so if Allah affirms to himself that he is all healer then the hearing is known from the understanding of the basic meaning which is the comprehension of voices will repeat if Allah affirms to himself that he is the all hearer then the hearing is known from the understanding of the basic meaning which is the comprehension of voices which is the comprehension of voices however however the essence of this meaning with respect to the hearing of Allah is unknown because the essence of hearing is distinct even amongst the created however the essence of this meaning with respect to the hearing of Allah is unknown because the essence of hearing is distinct even amongst the created certainly the distinction between the hearing of the created and that of the creator 
is greater and more evident so there can be no tashbih no drawing of similarities it is known that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about himself that he istawa ala al-arsh ascended above the throne then the term istawa according to the basic meaning is known istawa according to the basic meaning is known means ascendance however the manner i.e. the how of his ascension above his throne is unknown why? because the essence of the istiwa of ascension amongst the creatures themselves is distinct the istiwa on a firmly stable chair is not the same as that on the saddle of an unyielding and un and easily frightened camel the istiwa rising over on a firmly stable chair is not the same as that on the saddle of an unyielding and easily frightened camel and this is obvious the two istiwas are distinct when this is distinct with respect to the creatures amongst themselves then it is greater and more evident between the creator and the created then it is by all means greater and more evident between the creator and the created this refutes therefore the second sect there remains a very important matter Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said in his book Al-Aqid al-Wasitiyya quote Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'a, meaning Ahl al-Sunnah do not deny the attributes with which Allah has qualified himself nor do they commit tahrif distortion on the basis of reasoning by different statements nor do they indulge in wrong ta'wil in wrong ta'wil and this false ta'wil is distortion of the obvious meaning by various interpretations of the names of Allah and his verses nor do they liken his attributes to those of his creatures and nor do they describe their states the takif, the how of these attributes because there is nothing is in the likeness of Allah nor is anything comparable or partner to him not to follow analogy from amongst his creatures to demonstrate likeness and comparability with him this is summarized in three points the words of Shaykh al-Islam is summarized in three important points and they are guidelines very beneficial guidelines in understanding the names and attributes of Allah and they are as follows number one Ahl sunnah affirm the sifat the attributes as they came in the texts first of all whenever therefore there is an attribute you affirm the attribute so Ahl Sunnah affirm the attributes as they came in the texts so when you come and you read any text that has an attribute then there the first and obvious position the believer should take is affirm the attribute affirm the attribute second 
the second Ahl Sunnah affirm that the meaning of the Sifat the meaning of the attributes the meaning of the Sifat is obvious and naturally fits the context of the text or the texts we we'll repeat Ahl Sunnah affirm that the meaning of the Sifat is obvious and naturally fits the context of the texts so the meaning the meaning of the attribute therefore varies in accordance with the context and this in each context the meaning will be the obviously understood meaning thirdly they affirm that nothing is like unto Allah they affirm that nothing is like unto Allah's self his names attributes and actions they affirm that nothing is like unto Allah's that self his names attributes and actions these are the three fundamental points of benefit that will greatly assist in understanding and in safeguarding against any misconception which may be raised by the innovators so we repeat Ahl Sunnah affirm the attributes as they came in the text secondly Ahl Sunnah affirm the meaning of the sifat, the obvious meaning as within the context of the text and they affirm that nothing is like unto Allah's self, his names attributes and actions take for example the attribute of the hand take let us now apply these fundamental points in the example of the attribute of the hand one of Allah's attributes Allah stated let's take a text where the hand came mentioned take in Surah Al-Fatih chapter 48 verse 10 إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم Verily those who give bay'ah pledge to you they are giving pledge to Allah the hand of Allah is over their hands the hand of Allah is over their hands so what is the first thing now we affirm after we read the text let us see your answer what is the first thing you affirm from this text the hand exactly exactly this is the attribute so you affirm the attribute this is the first thing you affirm the attribute because Allah affirmed it for himself this is the first thing now you affirm the attribute of the hand so the hand of Allah is affirmed now you know that nothing is like him in his hand okay the second thing now we affirm is that nothing is like him in the attribute nothing like him in himself in his names in his attributes so this is the second thing you affirm the hand and then none like unto him in his attribute in this case his attribute is the hand that we are talking about now we come to the text and the obviously understood meaning the obviously understood meaning is that 
the obviously understood meaning is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly took their pledge and not Allah listen to the verse إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ those who give pledge to you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they are giving pledge to Allah so the obviously understood meaning is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly took their pledge and not Allah but since the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger of Allah who relates Allah's message therefore giving a pledge to him is a pledge for the one who sent him meaning Allah and Allah says in a similar meaning Allah says in a similar meaning مَنْ يُطْعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ as in 480 مَنْ يُطْعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ he who obeys the messenger Muhammad has indeed obeyed Allah so this is the obviously understood meaning from the text the obviously understood meaning is that the Prophet ﷺ directly took this pledge and not Allah but since the Prophet ﷺ is a messenger of Allah who relates his message therefore giving a pledge to him is a pledge for the one who sent him meaning Allah the Most High secondly the hand of Allah is true and real because this is his attribute it is true and real in the manner that suits his majesty the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true and real in the manner that suits his majesty and it is above them why? Allah said here يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ the hand of Allah is over their hands because it is an attribute of Allah who is high above his creation ascended the throne so the apparent meaning holds so the apparent meaning of the verse holds it does not necessitate that Allah's hand is directly touching their hands can't you see that the obvious meaning in saying quote the sky is over us does not mean that it necessarily touches us and to Allah belongs the most exalted example is that clear? no alhamdulillah طيب. so this is now now the now the hand is affirmed let's write this down the attribute the hand is affirmed that it is true and real and that it fits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing is like unto Allah and the obviously understood meaning is affirmed within the context of this verse let us take another example where the hand is mentioned and the obviously understood meaning is as you will see is as you will hear take Surah Al-Ma'idah chapter 5 verse 64 وقالت اليهود يد الله مغلولة غلت أيديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا بل يداه مبسوطتان ينفق كيف يشاء وقالت اليهود يد الله مغلولة غلت أيديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا بل يداه مبسوطتان ينفق كيف يشاء the Jews say Allah's hand is tied up be their hands tied up and be accursed for what they uttered nay both his hands are widely outstretched he spends of his bounty as he wills طيب 
So they obviously understood meaning in what they said, quote, they said Allah's hand is tied up. The obviously understood meaning is explained in the context of the verse when Allah says, He spends of His bounty as He wills. He proves liberty for His self. That is, His both hands are open to grant and to be generous. So, the hands now are affirmed and the obvious meaning is evident. Spends, proves liberty for himself, his both hands are open to grant and be generous. You see now, the context differed. The obviously understood meaning here is different from the obviously understood meaning in the previous verse. Is this now also clear? Is this now also clear? Tayyib? Now, should I repeat? Yes, I repeat the last part. Yes. You see, the obviously understood meaning when they said Allah's hand is tied up is explained in the context of the verse itself. He spends of his bounty as he wills. So, he proves liberty for himself that is both his hands are open to grant and be generous and the hands are affirmed and the obvious understood meaning is evident is that clear ya sister now okay طيب. now also we read we read in surah sad now another context another context 38 75 قال يا إبليس ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي قال يا إبليس ما منعك أن تسجد لما خلقت بيدي أو إبليس the devil شيطان what prevents you from prostrating yourself to one whom I have created with both my hands. So now, what do we affirm here? Let, uh, let me ask you now. This is, the, this, is the, this is the place where the attribute is mentioned. What do we affirm in this attribute? Number one, Allah's hands. Tayyib, the attribute. So we affirm the attribute. We affirm the attribute. Naam. Is it possible, question, is it possible that both my hands mean, quote, with my power? No. Yes, that's it. This is impossible. It is impossible. Why? It is impossible that both my hands mean with my power. Because the cursed Iblis, because the cursed Iblis was also created by Allah's power, and nor does it refer to his favor, Allah's favor, because of the Tashdeed Shadda in Arabic, Shadda in the term. Yaday, listen carefully. Yaday, this is Shadda. This is characterizing a letter by a lengthened equivalent in grammatical analysis and in prosody to doubling, denoting in writing by the, si by the sign Shadda over the letter. The grammatical form asserts two real hands it is not fit to use in the sense of power or favor because it is not right to say that Allah created Adam with his quote two powers or quote two favors see Allah created Adam with both his hands the command the will 
and the hands of Allah all were combined in the creation of Adam and in the manner that suits his majesty so here creating by Allah's hands this is the obviously understood meaning in this context let's take another text Surat Yasin 36 71 أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا أَنَّا خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ مِمَّا عَمِلَتْ أَيْدِينَا أَنْعَامًا فَهُمْ لَهَا مَالِكُونَ Do they not see that we have created for them of what our hands have created the cattle so that they are their owners Now let me ask you First thing you affirm what? First thing regarding the sifat, what do we affirm in this text? The hands. Exactly. Exactly. MashaAllah. Jayyid. Tayyib. Now let me ask you the other question. Does it mean, like the previous verse with Adam, does it mean that Allah has created the cattle by his hands? as he has done in the creation of Adam is this understood from this meaning here from this does it think does it mean that Allah has created the cattle by his hands as he has done in the creation of Adam or or that he referred quote the creation to his hands meaning himself which one the former or the latter the latter exactly the latter first we affirm the meaning right listen to the verse don't they see that we have created for them of what our hands have created the cattle so that they are their owners so does it mean that Allah has created the cattle by his hands as he has done in the creation of Adam or this refers the creation to his hands meaning himself yes meaning here himself referring to himself the first one is not the obvious meaning why because the Arabic tongue does not denote it listen Qala Ta'ala Allah says in 42.30 وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ and whatever of misfortune befalls you it is because of what your hands have earned right contemplate this verse whatever of misfortune befalls you it is because of what your hands have earned and he pardons much does the meaning refer to the earning of the hands or the earning of man himself man you see the obviously understood meaning this is the obviously understood meaning it certainly includes what is done by other than the hands you see you see how in the context you see how in the context things change and the obviously understood meaning would be in line with the context now compare it however now compare what we understood so far compare to the following verse in Surah Al-Baqarah 279 فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لَيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا then woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say this is from Allah 
to purchase with it a little price. Is this obvious that it refers to direct handling or not? This is obvious that it refers to what? Direct handling, right? Direct. You see how things changed from in the former and the latter now? So now we go to the, or, to the original verse which we were talking about. Had the meaning been that Allah has created the kettle by his hands, as in the case of Adam, the text would have been like this خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ بِأَيْدِينَا أَنْعَامًا We have created by our hands the cattle. But Allah did not say this. You understand? You understand? I will repeat. Had the meaning been that Allah has created the cattle by his hands as in the case of Adam the text would have been خَلَقْنَا لَهُمْ بِأَيْدِينَا أَنْعَامًا we have created by our hands the cattle but this did not come in this way it came do not they see that we have created for them of what our hands have created the cattle and there is a difference between the two and Allah does not intend confusion for his slaves so therefore yes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this he referred the creation to his hands meaning himself meaning he created the cattle but with Adam alayhi salam there was the creation by his own hands you see the difference yeah <coughs> Mustafa you got it now mashallah yes the creation of Adam by his own hands but here Allah added the hands to himself here he referred the creation to his hands meaning himself he created the cattle but with Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him by his own hands. And there is difference. And we gave the differences in two examples. The first example, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ And whatever of misfortune befalls you, it is because of what your hands have earned. Does the meaning refer to the earning of the hands or the earning of man? It certainly includes what is done by other than the hands, isn't it? Ya Mustafa. Right? You see? We don't say physically. We don't use the first physically. Okay, Ya Muslimah? We don't use these terms. We don't use these terms. Okay, Ya Mustafa, now clear. Now listen in the case Fawailun in the in the two seventy nine because this does not come from the way of the Salaf. Okay. Then woe to those who write the book with their own hands. You see now a difference between this and between the earnings by the hands. You understand, Ya Mustafa? You see the difference now? So now you understand the verse with respect to the cattle, right? And from these examples altogether, therefore, we conclude what we concluded earlier. Refer to the three points, the fundamental three points again now. So now you can, by these examples, understand this important reference. Ahl Sunnah affirm the sifat as they came in the text without likening Allah to anything and they affirm the meaning within each context 
and that meaning will be the obviously understood meaning now you know now you will know from this a very important deduction when you affirm it in the way Ahl Sunnah affirm then you affirm the attributes in this way you affirm the attributes and you will understand the meaning within each context without denying the attributes underline this carefully without denying the attributes as the people of Ta'til and people of Ta'wil figurative interpretation do So in this way you will affirm the attribute and the context will be the obviously understood meaning, the apparent understood meaning that will be directly understood when you read it. Is this clear? Is this clear? If you go over this now it's easy. You affirm the sifa, the attribute, in the, in, 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 you affirm the attribute and the obviously understood meaning where the attribute came will be in accordance with each context without changing the attribute meaning the attribute is affirmed you can't deny it and that there is nothing like unto Allah in what Allah affirmed to himself from these attributes within their own context walhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam